Ike Taylor didn't have a whole lot of interceptions in his time in Pittsburgh, but he was superb at man-on-man coverage to the extreme that Dick LeBeau used to say it was like taking away half of the football field from the other team. Good morning to you. Good Wednesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. Comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into hockey and or baseball. I also offer Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates, the same place that you found this. Hope you had a terrific 4th of July holiday. We are now three weeks out. Three weeks and change from the opening of training camp in Latrobe. The reason I mentioned Ike taking away half the field, similar to the way Darrell Revis used to, other great cover corners, Deion Sanders, obviously, although Deion came equipped with a lot of takeaways as well, is that the Steelers' offense in 2022, for the most part, took away half of the field from itself, or at least one-third of the field. Now, I used to just think this. I used to just have it somewhere in my head. But I took the time last night to dig through some numbers. If you've ever seen a website called Football Outsiders, very much worth your time. Some interesting stats, but they're not too arcane or they don't come with too many, uh, you know, super long acronyms or whatever. One of the stats that they keep on there is what they call directional lines, directional offense, directional defense. Which way are you going? Which way is the defense being scored upon or moved against? And while that won't get you the hyper-specifics of why it's happening or who's making it happen, it, it gets you some pretty solid daylight. And what I came up with in looking at these directional movements, and I really thought this one was interesting, of all of the Steelers' rushes last year, regardless of who it was, Najee Harris or anybody else, the Steelers ran to the left, meaning well to the left, only 5% of the time. That was the lowest such rate in the NFL. Whereas they ran up the middle, 58% of the time, which was the third highest rate in the NFL. Now, if that kind of rings a bell for you, just in terms of uh, picturing in your head, Najee or Jalen Warren or whoever running the ball, you picture them going up the middle. You picture them going to the left or right of Mason Cole. You don't picture them at all, hardly ever, going to the left side. And by the way, and just put this in parentheses, almost never around either edge. And you can say what you want about whether or not Najee can hit the edge. That's something that Najee talked about at summer workouts this year. Is He, he really wants to find a way to get out there. Uh, he wants to see the Steelers' offense in general exploit that a little bit more often. When it comes to the left side... What's the big, big thing that's changed from last season to this season? Well, obviously, it's the whole left side of the line. At least right now on paper, if you believe that Broderick Jones is going to be a starting left tackle on this offense, the way a 14th overall pick really should, then you're going to have not only a new left tackle, You're going to have a new left guard in Isaac Selmalu. And oh, by the way, a second and complimentary tight end who happens to be a monster and considers himself to be the sixth offensive lineman in Darnell Washington, who would line up on the left side. So you're going to have a situation where the left side of that line could be exponentially better than it was last season. I asked Washington at one point what it was like for opponents whenever it was him and Jones over there on that left side. And he said, he just kind of laughed. He was like, you know, there wasn't an answer for it. And there couldn't be. And there shouldn't be. It's college football. It's way down from what the NFL is. 
They should have been having that impact, but that confidence is there. That experience, that camaraderie is there. And when you couple that with everything that Sel Malu brings, not least of which is his leadership and his accountability that he administers the way he did in Philadelphia, you've got something over there. And I'm going to throw one other wrinkle into this. The left side generally isn't an area where you want your right-handed quarterback doing a whole lot of roaming or scrambling and certainly not planting and throwing from. But for reasons that I could never really detail for you, it just happens to be the case, Kenny Pickett really seems to like it over there. And I'm not just talking about the throw to Najee in Baltimore to win the game. He's been doing that since his pit days. He's just, he, he'll, he'll run over there and he won't even bother planting himself. He just has a natural ability to throw back against his body and against the grain and make plays out of it. So if Kenny is comfortable moving to that left side and he's able to get the protection that he needs on that left side of the line, and his receivers begin developing more of a rapport with him and when to come back and when to help bail him out, you could have the Steelers' offense presenting the opponent with something that they're not used to seeing, even if they prepare for it on film through the week. I just think this is a fun little thing to kind of file away for all of us. And the next time you see the Steelers, whether it's against the 49ers or deeper into the season, have a game where they do well on the left side offensively, whether it's running or passing. Just just remember this episode, all right? When we come back, J1Q. This segment of Daily Shot is brought to you by our good friends at Mike's Beer Bar. They're located on Federal Street, directly across from PNC Park. Mike has more than 500 beers on tap, including from more than 50 local breweries. Stop in and say hello. Tell Mike we sent you. Mike's Beer Bar. to today's J1Q, I want to give a special nod to Brent, who asked the last J1Q that we had on Monday's show. He got probably as many kudos as I think we've ever had for a question, and it came on uh, the YouTube commenting section. It came on, on our website, DK Pittsburgh Sports, and wherever people listen. I was like, that question was tremendous. It really was. If you weren't here for that one, What Brent asked was if the Steelers had deliberately mapped out dropping from 80 overall to 93 overall in the draft because there were no fewer than four off-ball inside linebackers potentially available in that slot, all four of them got claimed by the time 93 came along, so the Steelers took Washington uh, go back and listen to, I don't want to repeat my answer here or whatever, but I do want to give a shout to Brent for the quality of the question. There is a reason that these daily shots are structured so that you have a voice. This is why I'm never going to be anybody's know-it-all here. I want you to be able to speak up and pipe up, which is what Brent did. Anyway, so today's J1Q comes all the way from the other side of the planet. It's Breege in India who asks, DK, are we all ignoring a weakness at the cornerback position? There are two rookies. There's one who's at the back end of his career, mostly new faces. Breege, it's a fair question. It's also the first one I've ever gotten from India, so thanks for that. And my answer to you is yes. Yes. I believe we are underestimating it. I believe we are underplaying it, and I am not exempting myself from that. There is a natural and understandable excitement level that accompanies drafting somebody as high as you did Joey Porter Jr., and maybe even more in a different kind of way. When you get someone in the seventh round like Corey Trice Jr., and you go, wow, this is incredible. What a find. To the point that some were even building him up, I don't believe authentically, as having had a better set of summer workouts, meaning better than Porter's. 
we'll see how that goes when things get serious in Latrobe. But there's still two rookies going into the National Football League. And as I noted in passing in that opening segment, college football isn't this. It's a massive step up. And no matter what anyone thinks of their abilities physically, especially at the corner position, this is all cerebral, man. All of it is. They're going to be playing games with your head. They're going to be picking on you. And yes, I mean that in the way that you hear from the TV announcers. Oh, they're picking on the kid now. He just got into the game. They're picking on the kid. That's what they're going to do. They're going to try to suck all that confidence out of you. Maybe within the first three, four snaps that you're out there. You mentioned guys like Ike and Darrell the way I did in the opening segment. Part of what made Ike and Darrell as formidable as they were was that they were so scary to the other team that the other team just wouldn't throw their way. And then it's really, really easy to, you know, succeed in coverage when they never throw your way. I'm with you in the sense that I don't want to see more than one rookie start, and I want to see the one rookie who does start genuinely earn it, and I believe that'll be Porter. But from there, you know, I want to see Levi Wallace play a better brand of football than he did last season. I didn't think he was bad. Uh, he had a couple of rough patches, but th that, that's a position that's just so merciless when it comes to being exposed. You know, you're going to remember the stuff that he did wrong. I don't think he was bad for the Steelers at all. But if those are your two starting corners, that means you're kind of committing to Pat Pete, Patrick Peterson uh, being on the inside. And I don't know that they're going to be committing to that either. I believe that Peterson is there to be moved outside in the event that other things don't work out. I don't believe that's the ideal scenario. I think it's more of a plan B. But you're right. None of this is a situation where everyone should be going, this is just awesome. Certainly not in the year 2023. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. And we'll do another one of these tomorrow. 